Hey, this is Dave Brussels with Instructor 5 Productions, and we're privileged to have SNH products and their break apart nozzles, along with Mad Dog foam nozzles, sponsoring our video today. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at making your water wetter when fighting woods and grass fires. Now, when you're faced with a well developed fire, we all know we have limited access sometimes with our brush trucks, and not only that, we have limited water supply. So we're gonna look at how adding class A foam into the equation can make your water go further. For years, the fire service out west has used foam to make their water go further. There are research projects and reference manuals documenting the effectiveness of class A foam on these types of fires and how it helps conserve your water and more effectively knocks fire and heat down and prevents rekindle. We will list these in the credits of this video if you want to learn more. We're going to look at Class A foam as proportioning and application rates are not as critical as Class B foam, and it's less expensive and designed for Class A type fires like grass and brush. So all of us can consider this tool as an option. We are only going to look at batch mixing since not everyone has a foam proportioning system. Class A foam concentration is recommended to be between 0.1 and 1%. This means we're going to have to do some basic math. What is 1% of one gallon of water? Since there are 128 ounces in a gallon, we divide 128 by 100 since we're asking for 1%, and we get 1.28. So let's say we have 100 gallons of water. Then we will need 1.28 gallons of Class A foam to achieve a 1% batch mix rate. Most quick reference mixing charts drop the 0.28 and leave it at one ounce to one gallon ratio. So once you've done your math, it's pretty easy to figure out your batch mix ratio for Class A foam. You're going to want one gallon of foam for every 100 gallons of water. Today, we simulated a grass fire in this paved area. We will demonstrate Class A foam application with 0.5 solution. We are choosing 0.5 based on tests that show this concentration is very effective and using a higher concentration uses more foam with little noticeable effectiveness. What this is going to illustrate is two identical hay fires. We're going to put one out with water, and then we're going to put one out with foam and show how little water we use. And as you can see, without much water, and we're still smoldering, which means it's going to rekindle. And we're back over here, we try to put it out with water, and it's smoldering, getting ready to rekindle. So we're gonna go ahead and lay a little foam on it. And as you notice, he's putting it down, it's putting a nice foam blanket all the way around it. And when he shuts this off, even if that were to rekindle, it's got a foam barrier around it. It's got nowhere to go. As you can see, that backpack blower is really illustrating what happens when you're dealing with the weather and the wind gets a hold of it and you got really dry conditions. What we have here is we're illustrating like a grass or a woods fire that's starting and you get ahead of it and you go ahead and you wet down an area trying to create a fire break. Let's see if that water is going to be enough just to hold it in check. Okay, that's where the water was, but the wind took a hunk and jumped across. and it's taking it off, and it's going. Right across from where we wet it down. 
So as you can see, it slowed it down, but it didn't stop it dead in its tracks. And so the same thing on this next hay row, but this time we're gonna lay down a blanket of foam. And he's just gonna foam it down. He's gonna lay down that foam. And see how little he's using. But he's gonna foam it down good. Now granted, if your foam path isn't big enough and an ember falls across, granted it's going to, you know, light an area that's not protected by foam. And you can see where it's meeting up with that foam. It's just not wanting to burn. For all intents and purposes, the fire stopped where our foam break was. It's still smoldering there but that's burning out uh, on the back side of the fire. And it's got a foam blanket that it can't get through. So we hope today's video gives you another tool for your toolbox when you're faced with grass, brush, woods fire, and you have limited water supply. Remember after you've used foam to thoroughly clean out your engine or your pumper, make sure that there's nothing left in the tank, the pump, the lines, your nozzle, because foam left in there can become corrosive. Again, we want to thank SNH Products, which makes several wildfire appliances. Check their website out. And Mad Dog Foam Nozzle, their snap-on adjustable low and medium foam expansion nozzle provides an economical option for using Class A foam. Hey, remember to train like your life depends on it, because it does. Thanks for watching.